What is going on? Welcome to the Second of Strength Podcast, wherever you are. I'm always grateful that you're here spending your valuable seconds with me. And uh, look, I'm excited about today's episode. Today, we're going to talk about five life-changing skills that you can do, that your teenager can do, that take zero talent. Everybody can do it. Um, and But they're truly things that can be the difference maker in your life, it could be the, the difference maker in your teenager's lives. And, and they're really not that hard. It's just a matter of focusing on them, controlling what we control. So we'll dive into that. I'm excited to do that. Um, and thank you to everyone who's gone on to uh, wherever you're listening to this and, and subscribed and left a, a positive review. It really does help get this show out to more people. And we are reaching more and more people every single week. So I'm super grateful for it. So anyway, as I this this topic came up this week, because you know, I, I work with teenagers a lot and with teenagers and with adults as well, but we have these emotions. Everybody has emotions. And sometimes like the world feels like it's spinning out of control, but that doesn't mean that there aren't certain things that we can always control within our own lives, within our own mindsets to impact our day. And I think, and and really impact our life. And I think that sometimes we just, I don't know, we just, we get stuck in a space where we're not using these simple life skills and it's it really is the difference maker so if you are a parent this episode is perfect for your teenagers if you are a an adult this episode is perfect for you Um, but i hope it helps so the first thing really is we can always control our body language and way too often we don't do this right we show up and we are I don't know, maybe we're having a bad day, something could be going on in our lives, whatever it is. But really, if we're not controlling our body language, then we are sending a mixed signal to the world, right? And there's a there's studies out there that say that that only 7% of our communication is verbal. So that makes 93% of our communication is actually non verbal. So that comes in our body language, how we are showing up, how we are physically showing up for the day, for our lives, for anything that's going on. You know, I think about if you're showing up at a, uh, I don't know, if, you, if you're playing sports, you show up at, at a football or a basketball game and you're slouching and you're leaning back and you're not really in a, in a good mindset, then the coach is going to look over there and he's going to think that you're not ready to go, right? Or if uh, maybe you go to work and you're sitting in a work meeting, but your arms are folded and you're leaning back and, you're, and your legs are crossed. Well, if you're doing that, then you are, you know, whatever's being presented or whatever's being told to you, you are not uh, in a receptive, open stance to or, or seating or whatever, but you're not in a receiving uh uh, a state. So you are automatically closing yourself off to these things. And you think about all these uh, body language things that we can control. We can control our eye contact. We can control if we're smiling. We can control our posture. We can control if our arms are folded or our arms are, our legs are crossed, if our hands are open, if our palms are open. Like we can control all of these things to send positive signals out into the world because, because look, first impressions matter. And continued impressions matter. And if we are not continually paying attention to the way we are presenting ourselves to the world and to other people, then we are we're putting ourselves in a disadvantage. Because here's the thing is if if so many people aren't using positive, good body language in their day-to-day approach, then that's certainly an area where you can control it, take zero talent to do it, and you can set yourself apart from the other people that are there, right? If you are if you are in an eager body language position, then you are going to be in, in a state where people are going to look at you different, you know? And I think one thing that, that with body language that's so important is that it projects confidence. And so you can project confidence into the world just by the way that you carry yourself. And you may be walking into a situation where you're nervous, where you're anxious, where you're unsteady, where you're uneasy. It doesn't matter because you can still project confidence into those moments and it's going to set you apart from everyone else. So the first thing we can control, zero talent, and it's going to be life changing for you is your body language. The second thing is being coachable. You know, I can't think of I can't tell you how many times in my life where, you know, I I've approached a situation not in a learning mode. And I think that 
when we, we, we can set ourselves apart from anybody else by just being coachable, being willing to listen, being willing to leave our ego checked at the door, being able to admit that we don't know it all, um, and, and then realizing that the coach or the person, the, the, the adult, the teacher, the, you know, the, the manager, whoever it is, you all have the same goal, right? Like everybody wants us to be better. Everybody wants us to grow. And when we can go into a position, into a situation, and just admit that we don't know everything, and then be coachable and be willing to learn, it's going to set you apart from everyone else. And I think about, you know, coaching, I've coached my my kids' baseball teams and basketball team for years and years and years, and and I continue to do that. And, you know, coaches always, we always talk about the kids that are coachable. You teach them a new thing, and they start learning it right away. And then there's the other kids who just aren't willing to learn. They think they know everything. It, you know, I coach eight-year-olds right now, eight and nine-year-olds, and they think they know everything. And they don't, right? They know very little, actually. And that is very apparent every single time that I uh, coach those kids. But sometimes they think they know best. And being coachable, being able to learn, being able to grow from that is going to set you apart from everybody else. And it takes zero talent to do it. Everybody can do it. Everybody can be coachable. And it does require a little bit of humility. It requires you to check your ego at the door and recognize that you don't know everything. But when you do that, that's when you open yourself up for growth and expansion in your life just by being coachable. So number one, body language. Number two, being coachable. Number three is uh, one that I've really been focusing on a lot recently, um, and that's having high energy. And Here's the thing. Energy is infectious. It truly is almost probably more infectious than a common cold. Like it is so infectious. And when you have high energy and you bring that energy into a room, into a situation, it changes the dynamic of the entire building, the entire room. And all it takes is is just almost, you know, I, I talk a lot about finding your one second of strength. And there's this moment before you walk into any situation where you can choose high energy. You can choose to have the strength, to have the excitement, to bring the passion. You can choose to do that in any given moment. You find that one second of strength to do it. You flip the switch. I always talk about observing your behavior with the with the second of strength, the SOS approach that I call it. And when you observe your behavior and if you observe that you have low energy, well, that's the moment that you have to shift and find your high energy and move into into just a, a more um, impactful state of being. And, you know, what's cool about that is that when you have high energy, when you bring this high energy to your situation, to your life, to your family, to your work, when you bring that high energy to those situations, your productivity will increase, your decision making will be better, and your effectiveness will be through the roof. And so literally, it is it is almost like, I don't know, I, I was thinking of Superman and Kryptonite, but it can't be that because that's a bad thing. It's, it's the opposite of that. It is the best thing you can do for yourself is just come into every situation with high energy, a positive outlook. And those are things, again, everybody can do it. Everybody can do it. And, and I think sometimes we we let, again, this world that is out of control impact our internal controls or in, in internal world. The external world impacts our internal. And we got to flip that switch. We've got to do that the opposite way. We need to let our internal world, which is which we want to be high energy and passionate to be impacting the external world. And it will when we make that decision. So number one, body language. Everybody can do it. Zero talent. Everybody can change it right now, today. Number two, be coachable. Teenagers, be coachable. Like, it's the one thing. Like, let's recognize that if you've been on this earth for 14, 15, 16 years, then you just don't know as much as other people. And you do know a lot, and you're growing, and you're learning. And there's certainly areas where you are an expert. But let's not pretend that you know more than everybody else that's out there. And everybody else out there, let's pre not pretend that you know more than everybody else as well, right? Like everybody needs to be coachable in these situations. So body language, be coachable, have high energy. The fourth one, um, you know, I, I think is a I think is a learned trait, but it, it really takes zero effort and anybody can do that. But it's kind of this combination of having a good work ethic, 
along with doing a little bit more, right? Just do a little bit extra. And it's interesting as I think about my kids and I think about the things they do at home and it's like, you know, as they, as they grow, they change a little bit. But, and even this, this week, I've seen that my, my youngest, my eight year old has shifted a little bit with a couple of different things where, you know, before he might, you know, instead of putting his cup away or his, you know, cup in the sink or in the dishwasher, it would just like it, it would just sit right there on the counter and he'd slide it over towards maybe, maybe he would do that. He'd slide it over towards the sink. Now it's like he's walked around and put it in the sink. It's just that little extra. And I think work ethic is one of these, one of these skills that if you can work harder, work more than the other people, it is going to absolutely set you apart from everyone else. It will put you in the front of the, you know, promotion pool at work. It will put you uh, in into teams um, on on basketball teams, on football teams. Like it'll put you into starting lineups. It will do so much for you if you just have a work ethic that you are not willing to let other people outwork you, or that you're not willing to just let things get you know, pass you by without doing them. And so it's do the job until it's done. Um, And I think one of the biggest challenges today is that instead of just doing the work, we think that there's other things that we want to be doing instead, right? Those distractions, that four inch screen that you keep holding in your hand, that's keeping you from what matters most. Well, that's because it is distracting you. And we let that, that dopamine or that short term feeling of, of like, just a jolt of energy, we let that impact us and and tell us what we want instead of the work ethic and putting in the work and grinding for the things that we want most in our lives. And so that's the difference there. And so all that takes is that that shift. It's that one second of strength to choose that you want to have the results from the work instead of the short term pleasure from the dopamine. So work ethic. Number five is probably my favorite, and I was just reading a book um, called um, It Takes What It Takes by Trevor, um, uh, I think it's Moad, I think his name is, um, who passed away a couple of years ago. But, you know, in this book, he talks about being neutral, and he, he doesn't talk about, you know, that you should always have a positive attitude because that's not really feasible to always have a positive attitude. But it's also, he says, you know, there's not a... There's not a direct link between having a positive attitude and always having a positive result. But what he really talks about is being neutral because he says that negative will always lead to negative results and negative negative outcomes. And so we got to stay away from being negative, but it doesn't mean you have to be positive. What it means is you want to be neutral. And the way that he describes it, which I love, is that he really talks about, you know, understanding what happened, understanding what where we are now and what needs to be done. And if you can put that in perspective, and I think in this in the book, he's talking about Russell Wilson, the football player who is on the Broncos, used to be on the Seahawks, but he talks about, you know, throwing an interception. And then instead of being frustrated and letting that interception impact the rest of his game, he goes into the next play, neutral, even keeled, right? Because if we can do that and we can maintain this level of, of composure, then we're not going to let the past impact us and we are going to be focused on the situation knowing that we can create a positive outcome through that neutral energy. And I think that, you know, if if we have that neutral attitude, then we set ourselves up for so much success in our lives. And so so what happened doesn't really matter. I talk, I've talked about this before on the podcast, but if you, you know, our baseball team, if they miss a ball, you know, I always tell them like, it's okay. Let's do your next best. Let's forget the past. Let's forget that. And let's move forward. And so one of the greatest things and probably my favorite thing from, from this list of five things, and all of them are super important because all of them are things that you can do right now today. You can change them in your life or begin to work on them so that you can have this, this better outcome. And, you know, whether that is, you know, at your work or at your school or with your sports teams, wherever that is, you can, you can change that script, but, but having this right attitude, this neutral attitude so that you're not overreacting to things that happened in the past, but that you're staying composed in the future or staying composed in the present. So you can impact the future. That is where the magic happens. And if you can do that, you are going to change a lot of things and impact a lot of positive outcomes in your life. And so 
I hope that helps you. That's what I have for you today. You know, this um, this little episode, I think, will, if you can start implementing, it's going to immediately pay dividends in your life. So thank you so much. If you like this episode, um, just share it. Share it with, text it to somebody. Share it on your social media. If you share it on social media, you can tag me at Real Tanner Clark. But um, as always, I will leave you the way I always do. Go find your one second of strength and be happy. Oh, 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 oh,